Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. This is Bimsy Codes. Today we're going to be looking at increasing the difficulty of our game, because as you can see, we've got the game working, where we've got the droppable objects now spawning and falling from the sky. So what we want to do is introduce some difficulty and also start spawning some collectible objects for the player to grab. So let's get into the code. Getting started, we want to introduce more droppable game objects for the player to collect. So we want to turn this singular public game object, droppable, into an array of droppable game objects. So let's call this droppables. Um, now while we're spawning the droppables, we want to associate those with some weightings. So let's go ahead and introduce another array of integers. And that one we're going to call weightings. Weightings. You'll notice straight away as we've changed this from a singular droppables game object to the droppables array that we're getting an error in our instantiate method. So let's go ahead and change this one over here from droppables to droppables with the square brackets and zero. So that'll just reference the first index in this array that we create. Now what we're going to want to do is introduce the logic to spawn one of our droppable game objects based on their weightings. Now these two arrays need to be identical in size for this to work. So let's add some new variables into the scope of this update method. Um, so we want to add a weighted sum here. Um, and that's just going to pull all of our weightings and uh, sum the value of all of the integers inside that array. So let's call that waiting oops, spelling that wrong waiting sums or sum equals sum spelling this one wrong here all right so we've got integer waiting sum equals waitings dot sum. Now you'll notice this is a this throws us an error straight away. So we want to highlight this, go over here, and we want to introduce the using system link because this is a different set of methods that it allows us to use. So that'll let us use that sum method. Um, now we also want to introduce a random weight based on that waiting sum. So let's go ahead and create that variable random weight. equals random. We've used this method before. Range. Now when we pass integers into this random range, it actually excludes the last value. So you'll notice if we just hover over this method, range. Now we're passing integers in and it says return a random integer number between min inclusive and max exclusive. So that'll give us the sum of this and return a value between zero and the sum minus one. It's important to remember these small details so we don't get errors later on in our code. Now we're going to want to create a for loop here. So let's do for. Once you type for, you can hit double tab to quickly generate your for loop. So let's leave this int i as i and let's loop through our droppable game objects. So dot length. If we grab the length, this will just return the length of our droppables and we'll iterate through it that many times. So say we've got three droppable objects in this array, we'll be looping through three times. So what it does is it creates this i variable equal to zero. As long as i is less than this droppables, at the end of this for loop, we'll be incrementing it by one. So after we've done that, we want to check um, our values against an increment summary. So let's go ahead and create that variable as well. Int increment sum and set that one up as zero. Um, every iteration of our for loop, we want to increase that increment sum. So let's do a plus equals and we want to increment that one by our weightings. So throw weightings in here and pass i to reference the index that we're currently at in our for loop. Now let's say if random weight, so that's that random number we're generating, is less than our increment sum, then what do we want to do here? We want to instantiate this droppables. So let's grab this code. Let's set the timer to zero as well. We don't want to 
um, instantiate the droppables at index zero, we want it uh, instantiated index i. And that's because i represents the current increment in this for loop. So let's just add that here. And once that's done, we'd want to return because we want to jump out of this update loop so that we're not entering this for loop again multiple times and instantiating all of the game objects in one go. So I think that looks pretty good. We can go into our code and test this out. So going back to our game, um, the first thing we have to do is update our droppable spawner class. Um, you'll notice we've got these two arrays here now. So that we want to make sure they're the same size. So I'm going to set them to three because at the moment we've got three droppable game object prefabs. We've got our obstacle, which I'm going to put in that first area, collectible one and collectible two. Now we have to associate weightings with each of these prefabs. So I'm going to throw in 10 here, maybe actually 15. Uh, let's put 20 there and let's put 30 here. Or 30, not 13. All right, so when we go and run this game, we should see these uh, game objects dropping from the sky with a representation of their weight. So we should see uh, the collectible two appear two times as often as the uh, obstacle droppable which I think we're seeing. Uh, collectible 2 is still pretty slow. It falls quite slow, so we might want to adjust that rigid body later on. Um, yeah, so this is working quite well, actually. The next thing I'd like to implement is the progression system for our game. So this is actually quite easy to do. Let's jump back into our droppable spawner class. So how we want to implement this is by introducing a second timer that tracks a time, and once we hit the max time, we'd want to reduce this value, this one float, so that eventually um, we start creating more and more blocks as the game increases and it gets to a point where you can no longer win. So let's get into it. Starting out, let's uh, introduce a second timer. So I'm going to call this the progression timer. Um, so progression timer. And then I'd like to rename this timer just to make things more clear and we'll call this the spawn timer. Um, a tip we can actually do here is if we hold control and press R twice, it should let us rename this in every place we use it, which is quite handy. So I'll just demonstrate that now. Spawn timer, and now every single place we've used that, it gets updated. So let's go ahead and increment our progression timer like this. And now we want to handle a separate case for this progression timer. So let's say if progression timer so let's grab that guy. If progression timer is greater than, let's just throw in 1.5 for now because that's a ballpark number. Um, we want to do stuff. So do stuff here. So what is it exactly that we want to do? When, when this progression timer hits 1.5, we first want to reset this guy. So progression timer equals zero. So we don't get into like a sort of endless loop every update. Um, and then the second thing we want to do is reduce this time here. So to do that, let's create a second variable for the target time. Um, so let's do a public float. And now I'd like to expose this one and make it public so we can customize it in our Unity editor. So let's do target time. I think maybe three seconds initially might be all right. Actually, that seems a bit long, doesn't it? Let's make it two seconds initially. Target time there and then while we're at it let's also change this one and call this maybe the increment so uh, let's call that increment make that two seconds all right um, so what we want to do here is reduce this by a multiplied amount every time we hit this increment value on our progression timer so let's actually introduce a third variable and call this the multiplier or the target multiplier for a better name. Target multiplier. And let's say we'll set that to eight initially. Initially, Now this target multiplier sort of represents the value in which your game will progress. So the, the smaller this value is, the faster your game will progress. Um, and we can also adjust that by decreasing our increment here or decreasing our target time. So we've got a lot of sort of variables we can use to customize how the game progresses. Um, but what we want to do is run our target time 
uh, multiply equals. So remember that's similar to plus equals and minus equals. We're essentially multiplying it by whatever's on the right hand side of this operator. And we're going to multiply it by target multiplier there. And I think that's all we need to get this working, but just in case, I want to sort of put this one in a debug log. So let's remove this debug, and I'm going to just replace it with this here, so we can visualize what's happening to this target time in the game. But I think that's all we need. So let's go test this out. Um, if we just check our droppable spawner real quick, we've got everything set up here, target multiplier increment, and target time. So those are all available properties that we can adjust on the fly in our Unity Editor. Um, but let's go ahead and hit play and we should see the instantiation of these droppable objects increasing over time and it also should be fully customizable within the unity editor the progression of this game so i'm sort of noticing it straight away we can actually check our console here to make sure that it's actually getting reduced and you can see every time we print that number um, we're printing the increment on how many times the objects are going to be spawned. So this this print statement essentially represents the time it takes between spawning one of our objects. And as we can see, we've sort of got a nice progression going. Um, now one thing I'm noticing straight away is some of our blocks are falling too slow, some of them are falling too fast, so maybe we can cover that in another tutorial. And also adding more variants of the blocks, but it'll eventually get to a point where we just lose. Um, once we hit three red blocks, it should be game over, but we haven't, we haven't implemented that yet, so we'll get there. That wraps up this lesson, I'll see you guys in the next one.